This is Off Color Discussions. I am your host, Joe B. Sit with me, my man, Billy C. I'm What's sorry, up? is that too loud now? Yeah, it is a little loud. Now I mean, you loud. were screaming All into right. the mic. Do you want to start over? No, I thought that was back. a good one. No, we're good. It's fine. Uh, this episode is brought to you by our sponsor, Smoke Proper. Go to smokeproper.com. Use OCD at time at checkout. Save yourself 10%. Get yourself a nice sweatshirt, nice hoodie. Uh, they got tank tops for the ladies and a rolling accessories kit for those that like to partake in tobacco products or legal recreational or ma- uh, medical marijuana products. but not in the state of new hampshire not in the state of new hampshire no yeah. unless you have the medical license and then you can correct correct thank you i just like to put that out there how dare you uh this episode is also brought to you by iconic construction uh email mike i know he got a message tonight somebody's got a leaky leaky shower use ocd when you uh schedule your job and i'm pretty sure he's gonna hook you up with something something i don't know something. what <laughs> i know he's gonna do my kitchen shortly Oh, yeah. Finally, he's been in that tax return money. Always. Uh, this episode is also brought to you by, we have three different beer stores that we used for this one because we're doing a little game with the folks from Able, which we'll get into in a minute. We have Barley and Hops, uh, Burt's Better Beers, and the beer store in Nashua hooking us up with, we got Henneker's Wait a Minute, Ella's Hoppy Lager, and then some Lord Hobo Brewing, which is their Hobo Life Session IPA. Which we have actually featured on the show. Lord Hobo, not yeah. this one. I, I think, think we did. No, we did. Um, the Boom Sauce. Boom, the boom sauce. sauce. Yeah. It's my favorite. Boom. Is it really? <laughs> well, of Lord No, it wasn't Boom Sauce yeah. either. It was Steal This Can. That's what it was. Oh. I thought we had the Boom Steel Sauce can. too. No. Nope. Oh, you sound yeah. so disappointed by that. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want that one. We want Boom. <laughs> uh, tonight we're sitting with Carl Soderberg, who's been on before, and his partner in business, Mike. I mean, maybe For in some? other things. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's up to him. You know how friends get. <laughs> <laughs> they are the owners of Abel Ebenezer Brewing Company in Merrimack, New Hampshire. If you guys have not been there, you should go there. Their beer is delicious. And to be honest, that's pretty much what I use to like rank other beers when I go to breweries. Like, How does this one compare? Especially when it comes to anything like a smoked beer. I'm definitely looking at Burn the Ships like, how does this compare? Which so far, I think your guys have, have tasted the best. It's it's a subtle smoke hit, enough so you get the flavor, but enough that you're not, like, chewing on it afterwards. You're like, shit, man, I, just, I stuck that lighter in my mouth. But no, I'd, I'd, <laughs> Yeah, you're not licking the aluminum foil, balance. you know, underneath the grill. No, yeah, they, that's kind of the tough thing with smoked beers. They all kind of, you know, I don't know. I don't think there is another good smoked beer out there. That was kind of the whole premise in starting to, to make this beer initially was... Um, there really wasn't a smoked beer out there that we liked. Yeah, no, I, I don't think tough. I've had one that's been like where enough where you don't feel like you swallowed a fire pit afterwards. I found the one we tried recently. I think it was by Ooh. Henniker, wasn't it? The one they had the sampling mm. of. It was the only one that didn't taste like you were drinking liquid smoke with like a Budweiser. <laughs> oh yeah, it was decent. Well, that's good. I'm that glad called? people are coming around. Yeah, I, I, the whole idea of smoke. Like, <laughs> well, Great North had the the Rouch beer, which is great, but. You know, those are tough. I don't think they make I, it anymore. I think they passed no. that on to, uh, to Backyard. It was, uh, I mean, had, it was a good beer, but I think just the, the flavor of it. I've know, had Backyards. Yeah, that's exactly what I tasted, too. Was just the, it tasted like I was sucking on burnt beechwood or a birch afterwards. I mean, it's a, I mean, route, route beers in general are a very, you know, a very acquired taste. There's, there's nothing, like, there's nothing bad about the burn the ships though like there's no over i know it's the first one i had but it was there's none of that like i've tried i've probably tried six or seven other ones that are smoked and they all taste pretty much the same with that why do you air quote that's, smoked <laughs> because that's what they say and it doesn't taste smoked I, I, I it remember, tastes well, like well, drown when we were when we were designing the beer i mean it took a it took a lot of tries to actually get it to the point where we were comfortable actually making it a product um because prior to that it was kind of just a, a joke in the garage of um let's make a smoked IPA because no one's really done that before. Um, when we finally got it to like this version, I remember it was just kind of like a, 
a eureka moment of like forget a smoked ipa it's just a damn good beer and that's really all you're going for it was like we, we could just remove smoked ipa off the front of it and it would just be that a damn good beer yeah now do you get that a lot from people who come in and they're like what is that like they've never had anything like that do they oh yeah all the time you get, you get the people go, what is that that extra little bit in there all the time people are like that is just that's different it's like nothing <laughs> i've ever had before it's very complex um people just can't quite put their finger on it because it really is kind of in a category on its own yeah um it, there's obviously debates over whether or not that category is good or not but to us like the whole reason why we brought it to market it was it was a beer that we loved and we love sharing it with the people who love it back there seems to be quite a few of them because it's still mind-blowingly our number one selling beer. Didn't you guys just get in a couple more restaurants? I, yeah, yeah <laughs> quite a, a few weeks. more. <laughs> um, it's kind of. Yeah, I mean, we have the new <laughs> brewing system up and running, yeah. and we have uh, you know we're we're kind of off to the races at this point. So now we can start knocking people off the list and making phone calls and I don't know going back to being regular business where we're not waiting for the business to come to us. Right. What is now that you have that new system? What is your capacity? Because I think before you said it was like nine thousand gallons. I know it was, we were we were doing about six to nine hundred gallons a nine week. Inches. I mean, Mike can talk better, but I think we could probably do almost double that. I mean, we're talking like twelve hundred gallons plus a week that we can output. Damn. Yeah. And the beer, you know, it's going to be cleaner and better, and it's easier to brew, and you know, we have better control, and there's more temperature consistencies, and. You know, all those little things, I think, you know, you can make good beer like 90% of the way, and then that last 10%, you know, you really have to, like, spend money and, you know, on the right equipment and things like that just to get, you know, like, you know, 5% better. To you fight over I mean? those last yeah, inches yeah. of... Yeah. That's beautiful. So I think okay. it was kind of the last straw of, like, all right, we, we've kind of, like, we've proven explored we can hang the everything game. we can do, and we know what we like. Now it's just a matter of getting the right equipment so we can just do those things better. Yeah, being able to just hang in the game on the, the brewing system that we were brewing on. I mean, we're only two weeks into the brewing system we have now. I cannot, you know, just looking back three weeks ago, I can't believe that's how we made beer for almost four years. Yeah. Now, is that <laughs> like, I mean, we would physically <laughs> add, add, you know, it was 700 pounds a brew day of was an ourselves. event. It was an event. It was, even if it was, like... You know, bitter cold outside. We're wearing board shorts and t-shirts, like sweating and sweating our balls off in this warehouse, trying to like. Uh, and it was like a ten-hour event, seven in the morning to like four o'clock, four thirty in the afternoon. Yeah, just imagine standing by a bonfire the whole time. You know, Jeez. that's what it felt like. Yeah. That sounds amazing. So in the wintertime, it's not terrible, but in the summertime... And then the, you're cleaning the mash tun, and it's like a sauna, because you're just putting off so much steam into the building. And then people come in from the cold outside, they're like, wow, it's really, like, warm in here. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, I imagine when you're really bailing that. it out with buckets. Here. It's like you're leaning over it. It's not passively going by you, you know? it's uh, You're basically <laughs> jumping in the mash tun to get it out. So yeah, the, it was not fun. The new addition is like a replacement, right? That yeah, replaced the, the old sy- way of yeah, doing the it. Whole not... system's replaced. Um, so now it's it's a more automated process. I mean, one guy can do the job now at this point, um, which is kind of sweet. Um, and and it's easier, like Mike said, and it's more time efficient. It's more raw material efficient, and overall, it just makes a better product. It's more consistent product. Um, Our previous transfer pump was older than me, so. Well, yeah, it was you know. old. Wow. We we kept an oil drip pan underneath it. Constantly. Holy crap! It was now. Did you? The thing was a. I mean, it was an animal. I mean, all it did was work. But <laughs> that's the thing is like the the, the brewing system was like, uh, as as uh, you know, as much as we make fun of it, it made ninety thousand gallons worth of beer and got us to where we were. And that was kind of the whole thing. Every time we every time I gave brew tours, I'm like, one day this thing is gonna pay for a beautiful brewing system that's going to replace it and you know that that time's now upon us and uh so 2018 is a you know we're off to the races kind of year so that's awesome to answer your initial question yes we've brought on quite a few new restaurants (laughs) and you'll probably see quite a few more um we've brought on even more retail accounts we don't really announce retail accounts via social media just because that would be a, a nightmare to do yeah um but we keep our website updated religiously and uh I mean, I, I think that retail list is going to grow. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it doubles this year. Nice. You're talking Congratulations. About like beer stores. Like <laughs> yeah, the beer stores, stores. Uh, uh, grocery stores, um, stuff like that. Like We're, we're not awesome. talking to Whole Foods. Wow. Which we, we're on tap at the bars in Whole Foods, which doesn't go through as much volume. But the Wait, shelf space. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Stop a minute. Just... You, 
Wait a minute. Whole Foods has a, a bar inside of it? Like, they serve beer. I've you never been those? I've never been into Whole Foods before. He goes to Hannaford. <laughs> I go to Hannaford's, man. Jeez, like, I don't go to Whole Foods. Oh, you're that guy. <laughs> now, yeah, I am that guy. I am that guy. Now you, now you have to go to, to now, Whole Foods. Now yes. I gotta go to Whole There's Foods. There's a 32 draft line bar in Whole Foods. Shit. Maybe Burn the so ships good. in Auburn have been on tap there since that Whole Foods in Nashua opened. Damn. Damn. And, they actually uh, have like some of the best beer selection in New Hampshire. Really? Like when people come in, they're like, where should I go? It's like, go to Whole Foods. Yeah, get a slice of pizza when you're at the bar or a burger. Well, they always keep 16 on from New England, and then the other 16 they get from all over the country. And That's awesome. You know, they're just really That's good awesome. about getting good rotators in there, so you never Damn. know what you're going to get. Duly noted. That was the Ella. What'd you think? It's good. I was wondering if there's any more of it. There's <laughs> courses. Yay! Yes. You might have so, to get another while you're closer to the fridge. Go ahead, ask uh, your question. Yep, you're definitely uh, going to hit. Just, <laughs> so I want to ask you something. Because <laughs> what is that for you. Uh, Hell's beer? Yeah, I hope I'm saying that right. Something, something happened with the mic. Like, what happened? I don't know. It What's just the sounds matter? weird. Um, you sound perfect. It's I'm basically just like a, is it just like like a, a pale lager. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was just curious because my sister's fiance brews beer at his house. Yeah. And he enters a lot of competitions and stuff and she sent me a message the other day. i've been trying to get him to send me beer mm-hmm. for years and he just doesn't they won't send it to me i don't know why i don't know if it's a logistics thing where he's afraid of doing it or what but it's just uh, lazy i mean i have a huge log, yeah. backlog of people i'm supposed to send things to <laughs> <laughs> i would assume that you can shit right. but i know i know new hampshire has weird laws about alcohol and like they're all I mean, technically that's supposed to shit i'm sure he cares very much i mean every every week i rewrite the list like i'm gonna do it but <laughs> just yeah, at fake right. cross off a name that's right seriously this <laughs> week i'm sending this stuff to him okay yeah. so all right that's now i know what it is because i asked her and she's like Meh, it's good there you go <laughs> so and that's all that matters. We, we were actually debating that earlier today the importance of styles on the beer can i know that people should know what they're getting themselves into before they open the can or bottle or whatever but i don't know i, I get to a point where I don't, I don't even read past the labels anymore um Every once in a while, you go to a restaurant, and it's like a brewery you like, and they have the tap handle, and then you order it, and you know, it's like, I was expecting an IPA, and it comes out of Porter, and you're like, God damn it. I That's exactly how I used to do it. talking about, too, but... Um, <laughs> That's how I used to do it. Now, now I just want to try anything new that I haven't mm-hmm. tried before, almost regardless of style, but... I don't know. I just feel like we drink beer so much, like, you just kind of get in these moods. Because everyone asks, like, oh, what's your favorite beer at the brewery? And it's like, it just depends on the mood. Right. So. I think it would be more curious as to your, I mean, I know you partial to the able beers, but something in general, like something outside of that, that's something that you just really enjoy drinking. Boom sauce. Boom sauce, right? <laughs> that I really, was quick I really, to the trigger. On. <laughs> no, I just really like ordering it. <laughs> oh, just saying boom sauce. <laughs> That's yeah. actually, you're right, it is fairly, Dan had a good time ordering it. That's yes, probably what accounts for most of the sales of Burn the Ships. People just love ordering it. I'm kidding, Mike. It's a beautiful name. beer. No, it's it, is, it is probably a little <laughs> bit of both. It is a beautiful beer, and it is fun to say. Is... Well, I actually went up to uh, Burlington, Vermont for New Year's, and I just sip of sunshine. Just loved it. That's so, good stuff. Yeah. It's yeah. good on draft. Yeah. Honestly. I actually had a can of that, my buddy, but you didn't get it. On, so. I, you know, it always oh, feels like the closer you get to the source, everything's a little bit better. Yeah. And it's the best way to try anything. So. Well, I refuse to buy this anywhere other than... Well, I mean, it's just, well, I mean, but, that's one of the reasons why we like to stay within that hour is, yeah. you know, it's like, you know, the guy probably just delivered it, so. <laughs> and that's well, like, and it's been one of our biggest, like, I, I don't know, adds to the consistency and quality of the product is like these cans never get warmed up. Like even whenever we bring on new retail accounts, the guys show up delivering the cases and they're like, oh yeah, you can just like leave them there on the floor. And he's like, no, these are cold. I need to put them into a cold room or Carl says I have to bring them back. <laughs> so uh, like, he's like, really? They're cold? And. Uh, it's like unheard of that, but, but I think that, that to your point, like people want to drive to the brewery or the closer you get to the source, the better it is. But even if you're going to, like you said, Burt's or Barley and Hops or the beer store, I mean, that's, that's about as close as you can get beside like walking in our cold room. Cause those cans literally come out of our cold room and go right into theirs. Um, and any can you see on a shelf right now is less than probably three weeks old. Oh, and, oh wow. Yeah, we're turning over inventory quick. I can imagine it's freshness. What did you taste when you tasted that? This uh, the Ella Oscar Blues. Is that what, the Ella? Yeah. <clears throat> it's very uh, florally. Is that what the Ella hops is? 
Oh, this is that, uh... Yeah, it's an Australian hop. This, this is the hop that Jim's playing with. Oh. Yeah, we, we uh, like, you know, we have a homebrew system that we still use, and, uh, one of the guys that we hired, uh, you know, he's just taking an active interest in brewing, so he always fires it up, and he's, he's done something that I wish I could go back and do. He just does single malt, single hot beers, and he kind of goes through the painstaking of just kind of seeing... How that tastes, and then how that one tastes, and how that one tastes, and it's great. But like, I don't know. I don't have the patience for that. So I'm glad. I, I'm glad we hired someone who does. Yeah. I'm gonna have to let him know that Oscar Blues makes a beer with that hop. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I like it. Australian Spoiling. hops are really uh, coming to life. Originally, it was called Stella, and then uh, they got Stella Trois <laughs> got angry about that. So I think Stella sucks. But that's that's me. Uh, I agree. I'm not a fan. Not you, Stella, the beer. Yes. Right. Oh. Interesting. I dig Stella. I'll grab another one. Do you? It's classic. Oh, yeah, I'll grab another one. <laughs> it is a classic. <laughs> I want my chest. I have to offset my boom sauce. <laughs> oh. Damn it. You've already had the wait a minute. They had a... Uh, I haven't had it. It's so good, though. What did we I'm go excited. there for? I went to Bert's... Uh, last week, this weekend. This weekend, well, yeah. And uh, Henniker was doing a tasting there, and I don't even remember what it's called. I just know it's a yellow can. Uh, but the rustic. It, yeah, the rustic. But they're releasing it uh, this week or next week, and I'm like, fuck. How lovely. That one was actually pretty good. Like a <sighs> farmhouse ale, basically is what it. I'm getting to know. Uh, styles more than anything. I still no uh, genius connoisseur at all when it comes to these things. I mean, I'm not either. I mean, that's kind of why I think I rebel against styles. I mean, I, I want to know what I'm getting myself into, but I don't know. You look at the Heady Topper can, it doesn't say double IPA on the front. It just says ale. It says double IPA on the back, but um, I don't know. I, I, I'm kind of like what, what you were saying. You, you kind of just dig trying a lot of different things yeah. and um, I don't know. I like what I like, and uh, I, don't know, I feel like we're going back to a point where, like, you know, there, there's not a, a divide between beer and, or, and like macro beer and craft beer. We're going back to a, a place where just beer is beer, and uh, I just think it's going to take time for palates to evolve to the point where, um, you know, you don't really care about what what the style is, and just you know, you know what you're in the mood for. Oh yeah, good beer is definitely a good beer. I think until you like you go to that place, uh, McSorley's, and uh, it's that old ass bar in New York City. Uh, it's like 160 something year old bar. It's like the oldest bar on the East Coast. Really? Like, yes, yeah, it's this old Irish pub in downtown New York, and um, but they don't have like beer brands there. It's just light or dark. Really? <laughs> it's kind of. I mean, it sounds cool. It's kind of garbage, but it, I mean, it sounds cool. But <laughs> I mean, that's kind of like you know. Going back to that story about the porter wanting, you know, like an IPA or something like that. I think the subcategories of everything kind of gets ridiculous. Mm. You know, everyone's like, oh, it's the difference between a IPA and a double IPA. And it's like, it's just a subcategory. Yeah. <laughs> well, now you have like the IBUs are, are classified more on who has what. You have East Coast, West Coast IPAs. Uh, yeah. I've gotten to a point where I go into this, like those specialty stores, beer store or whatever, and... I'm looking more. I found myself looking more for like can art mm-hmm. names that catch my attention because I've tried all the different kinds and I've I spent a lot of time trying different IPAs. So you end up this. leaving every store with a bird in the ship's name. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like to go back to that, you know, just like we try to like have a personality for all the different beers and stuff. Like one of my favorite breweries is uh, Melvin Brewing. I went out to Jackson Hole a couple of years ago, and uh, Melvin's just kind of like one of those local cool spots and you know it's like a huge like snow, snowboard culture and stuff and they've been blowing up and you can get them all over the place i finally got some down in massachusetts but you know like the beer tastes amazing but there's just something about it you know it's just cool and kind of go back to it you know now it's like all right the beers taste good you know how do we yeah. you know what else you got so yeah i mean the, it's the artwork that usually catches my attention or uh if it, it I found that if it has a really cool name, it usually has a really cool story behind it, like on the can. Obviously, you guys get the little history stuff, but yeah. that's kind of where I've gotten to because I've tried so many different kinds that I just don't. I don't want to go in and say, "Ah, oh, yeah, I just want an IPA," or because yeah. I'm never really in the mood for a porter. But I found a, 
a couple things outside of my bo- like my comfort zone that had a really cool can, made me buy it, or you know, a nice looking bottle or something. Tried it, liked it. A couple of them I didn't. Kept yeah. the bottles. <laughs> But, I mean, it's like, what, arrogant bastard forever. I mean, that was just oh, cool to have. Even if you thought it sucked, yeah. you're like, well, yeah. I, I can't say I don't like it, you know. <laughs> Are you dismantling their can to, to figure out how they got the label on? Yeah, the, uh, yeah. <laughs> I read no, it. All right. I wanted like, to see if yeah, it was wrapped, if it was labeled, if it was... No, it's not wrapped anymore. No, it's a it's a white can with a clear label printed onto it. It's a good, it's a good idea. Where's yours? Uh, the victory cans are printed right on the can, so you can't get that off. Uh, burn the ship's cans are wrapped, which is actually a better option for a brewery our size. Just because when you order the pre-printed cans, they deliver a full truckload, and that's like, that takes up a lot of room. Wow. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's why for the first six months, we didn't offer burn the ship's cans, because if we ordered two truckloads. Ooh, yeah. Because yeah. remember Mike even asked the guy, like, well, what if we wanted to get, like, Burn the Ships came too? He's like, oh, you want a second truckload? He's like, oh, no. No, no. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> Plus the truckload's, like, like, 25 grand, and it's like, all oh, those cans are going to last you, like, a year. You know, <laughs> so there's the logistics side of, like, putting your product into packaging that you kind of have to consider. Um, so I, I'm always interested in how other breweries are, are doing it. You know, Henniker's bigger than we are but they're not egregiously bigger so um you know, yeah their, curious. their warehouse is pretty big i went there once but <clears throat> their tasting room or or whatever is about the same if not yeah but they don't do the pines small. as much as dave would love to yeah i'll eat the wait a minute so i picked it that's yeah, really good that yeah that's what's in here yeah that's what that one is it's pretty what good. makes an ipa an ipa Versus a lager versus a... Well, uh, first a, it's an Indian pale ale. India. Yeah, India Shut pale ale. Oh, no. I fucked it up too. <laughs> so he said big, Indiana last see, time and I'm like... It's an no, Indian it's style in India. pale ale. <laughs> He's trying to bust my balls and <sighs> fucked it up fucked himself. Up. Yeah, we, there that's you all go, right, asshole. That. Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> that can be taken out. It's all right. Every time we do a new label, I look up stuff like that. I'm like, don't say this wrong. Yeah. <laughs> no, you gotta make true. sure you're doing it right. Mm-hmm. But yeah, there's one thing I wanted to ask you uh, last time you were here, and then even when Chris was here, I went to ask, I had it in my mind all day, like, don't forget to ask, don't forget to ask, and then time came, and I forgot. I'm like, fuck, fuck, I will not forget this time. <laughs> but I, a, as somebody what makes an like, IPA, an IPA? Yeah, versus like a, a lager or an ale. Like, what it's is, an over hop beer. In other words, uh, more hops than you would, I guess, deem necessary to just balance out the, the bitterness of the, or sorry, the uh, sweetness from the malts. Okay. Um, and the story, the reason why it's called an India pale ale is, uh, <clears throat> so they would over hop the beer when, uh, the, the English were colonizing India. Uh, it was a two month journey around the Southern horn of Africa from England. And they would over hop, not just the beer, but also the water that they put into casks and barrels on the trip there because hops are a natural, um, preservative. The alpha acids, yeah. uh, prevent microorganisms from taking hold. So they would overhop the beer, so all the colonists in India would uh, grow a palate for very hoppy beers, and when they came back to England, that's what they demanded at the pub, so it became a style. You know, fast forward a, couple, you know, a few hundred years later, the Americas have kind of dominated the style and taken it to a whole new level, but it's, it's kind of where it originates from. It's just an overly hopped beer. And now I know. Yeah, and, and to you know. further answer the question, so all beers are either lagers or ales? And it's the type of yeast. Okay. Yeah. So all yeasts are ales or lagers. So so they lagers are cold dark fermenting, and they ferment on the bottom. And then ales are warm fermenting, like room temperature, and go up top. So a lot of microbreweries starting off, you know, if they don't have tons of equipment for refrigeration and things like that, they'll do ales mostly. But yeah, and there's hybrids in between there, <laughs> but it's either ale or lager. And this is that, and this is the look on the face of like, I asked the question, now I know. I just want to drink my damn beer. Yeah. I really don't care. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I was, I was very curious. And then like, uh, like there's dry hopped. Uh, there was one that we had from Great Rhythm that was a wet hopped. I'm like, fuck, the man. How many, how many different ways can you like do stuff? But it seems like it's there's endless. There's a lot you can do to a beer. Apparently so. And they keep coming up with more shit to That's do, too. Well, Sam Adams came out with the Sam 76, and Man. it's an ale and lager beer. I'm like, all right. Cool. <laughs> Whatever. We just poured it together. Well, it's like uh, Kettlehead 
they they have like their their IPAs, their doubles, uh, a couple of lagers and ales. But they take they have a couple that they'll do like a combo with. Mm-hmm. So they'll take uh, one of their ales and one of their lagers and like put it together. I'm like, <clears throat> all right. Nice. Like one was a, uh, I think it was like their like east to west or no, their quest. I think it's called. It's like a hazy orangish color. And then they have one called like bomb pop. That's like a. I don't think it's a sour. It might be their sour. That's like a pinkish color, and they'll put it together, and then now it like separates with the pink on top and the orange. I'm like, whatever. You guys can have that. I just want the El Dorado one. It was delicious. <laughs> Speaking of Sam Adams, have you ever had the is it oh, Utopia? The, yeah. You, no. You no. Utopias? You've never had it. I'm not Utopias. even related. I had I had asked Chris the same thing, so I wanted to ask you guys if you had ever. You want to spend two hundred dollars? Ponied beer? up the money no. to try it, or come nope. across it at some not point. Not even on my bucket list. Not even on. Okay. No. So, it's probably terrible. Uh, yeah. <laughs> not a big fan of barley wine. No. Needs. I feel yeah, like I it's don't. It's gonna be up there with that. Oh, I like well, a, a good, easy drinking beer. Simple. America. 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 <laughs> not a utopian America. It's not America. No. <laughs> so with the new brewing system, and uh, are you gonna have a little bit of extra time? Anything you want to want to do? Yeah, or? I watched like three movies today. <laughs> <laughs> I binge watched The Re-watched Office for six Alien. hours. I mean, that's kind of what we're figuring out now: is what is the new rhythm? How do we organize everybody? Because like before, it was you know if we were brewing that day, this these two to three people are dedicated to brewing, and you know now now we're in this whole new rhythm. We're starting to talk about do we need more vehicles? Um, uh, you know, it, it's a whole reorganization of the company because it changes everything that we do. Because everything we did before was built around the old manufacturing rhythm. Now the manufacturing rhythm just got streamlined, so we're we're slowly learning how I guess we're supposed to operate as a business going forward. But I think that's one of the things that you know makes us good at what we do is we're good at solving problems and rolling with the punches and reacting. So, I mean, we're still getting shit done. We did you know over a dozen deliveries today. So the guys are on the road every day of the week, and now we're just cranking out a lot more beer. So <laughs> the, the the tables have turned. Instead of um, the distro guys, uh, you know, driving all their sales off of um, what manufacturing can do, now it's manufacturing kind of pushing them forward. And it's like the faster they can turn over the cold rooms, the better. Do you right have now, a limit awesome. that you can go to? Uh, Two thousand. Legally, we can do 2,000 barrels a year, which in the grand scheme of things, like in the, by comparison to the beer world, is really not a lot. But for us, that's a lot. Yeah. Last year, we did uh, just over 1,000. So. And it was a busy so, year So, I mean, we year, can so. essentially double what we do. and I mean, We're crazy. very efficient with that volume. It, it goes to all the right places. And, um, you know, the fact that we self-distribute and that operation is very efficient. You know, the, the, the margins are nice and high. So, um this expansion gets us up near the 2000 barrel mark. And I mean, that might be the sweet spot for the next couple of years. I mean, if we hit all of our numbers, it's you still only in New Hampshire. Oh yeah. Yeah. And that's really the plan for at least the next couple of years is just taking over New Hampshire. That's awesome. Like uh, I said, number one in barley and ops for, for I mean, it, for we're, half the we're, year we found out today, apparently we're birds better Burt's Better Beers is number one brewery at the shop. Dude, that's awesome. I mean, that's, it's that's and that's the feedback we're kind of getting, and we're we're happy with that. I mean, we're gonna, I mean, as sexy as it would be to you know be able to go to downtown Boston and have a burn the ships. It's you know you, you got to kind of look at it and say like, well, what are we meant to be? And I think right now we're just meant to be that beer of New Hampshire. So for us, the the world ends at the New Hampshire border. Um. And it's kind of cool because people from Massachusetts keep coming up to buy it. So that's great. Well, it worked for. Um, no, nah, it's fucking the. It's escaping me. The Pennsylvania beer. Oh, Yingling. 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 <laughs> it worked for them forever. I mean, they stayed. Didn't they stay in Pennsylvania for like? No, they were all seven, over the place. Sixty or except, seventy years. No, I they were all Maryland. over the place except for New, New England. England. Oh. I thought they had just expanded to like Florida and shit. They recently. were like Florida up to like Maryland, Pennsylvania, New York. I mean, when I went to school in Connecticut, I used to road trip to uh, to New York beer stores to buy Yingling. Yep. Yeah, we used to go. <laughs> we used to do it uh, I don't know why. Four hour trips <laughs> 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 because you couldn't get it here. We <sighs> thought it was exotic it's back amazing. then. Yeah, you want someone to want something, tell them they can't have it. But yeah, they're number one for a craft brewery. Uh, I don't think so. 
I think it's they the same was Adams. Still top, long. No, there was a top right. top fifty list today. Like there always uh, like one and two. Though. Ship yeah. Shipyard um, Jim from Shipyard just posted today. Uh, it was a top fifty list. Yangling was number one. I'm like, how are they a craft beer? They are though. Well, that's, that's I mean, I mean, it, that's it's really well, a tax I mean, it's delineation. All about, it's, it's it's all about labels, man. Still, Sam Adams is right. like, which is bullshit. <laughs> but like, how are you middle class? <laughs> 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 you made like a million dollars more than me yeah. last year. <laughs> <laughs> but like I told the guys from Long Blue Cats, I mean, I think you guys have like changed the game as far like micro brews or nano brews. Like Sam Adams put out a whole new line of of IPAs and all this shit shipyards put out new beers new ipas and and change recipes on stuff budweiser's trying to buy up as many little small breweries as they can like, i think microbrews have definitely come in and changed the game as far as like the big beer go i, I think it's changed faster than people thought it would and changed more drastically than people i mean look look at the smutty nose auction i mean i don't think anybody uh, four years ago would think that that smutty nose would be under bank auction four years later i mean that's yeah that's a little yeah. that is a little crazy that, did it go? that's I the, mean, we that's the beginning visit, what a year ago a year we got a, yeah the day trump got top elected to bottom <laughs> tour. that's right <laughs> smutty nose went right under <laughs> and it was great and no they were very awesome impressive to see and the brewer was awesome and i just yeah. tried to hear the one. news you're like oh shit, oh, shit. Yeah. yeah it was like holy shit a reckoning is coming type well, thing. well it makes you feel like oh i mean if that happened to them then it can happen you know, to anybody. Who the hell am I? So yeah, yeah. I just yeah, tried to it... order one, and and they were like, "Yeah, no, we don't have that right now." Oh but, yeah, but it's on the list. Yeah, we went to yeah, uh, yeah, Wild we Wings. Because right <laughs> I mean, you see the brewery, and, and the place is, you know, it's everyone's impressive. dream. Yeah, it's awesome. But is that why though? I mean, they they jumped the they jumped they, up they too over, too they, high. They yeah, they they overspent at the at the run. And this is Peter Eggleston's words when he wrote his little his um his letter about it. And I, I mean, I feel for the guy, but. Um, basically they, they, they spent, I mean, they, they, it's the largest lead certified, like green brewery in the United States. They, they spent a real bit, pretty penny on that thing, but they spent all that money at like the worst time. Right. Yeah. Usually <clears throat> something like that's a perfect storm of, you know, a wrong decision and then a downturn plus, you know, this and that and. Well, plus he he had also yeah. said that you, they, you can weather one or two. Well, he had said but... that their their sales models were based on. He was like, we had seen twenty years of consistent growth, year over year, twenty years in a row, consistent growth, and then all of a sudden it just leveled off, and that killed it. I mean, that's that sucks. and that's and I think that's why like for us like this new like this new brewing system and the, and this is something that um I've talked to other brewers in the industry and they you know they see on Instagram. Or whatever else we were receiving new equipment they're like oh what size are you going to i'm like we are still 10 barrels like we didn't buy we didn't double or triple the size of our brewery we bought a brew house of the exact same batch size that's just easier to use and that's mind-blowing to other people in the industry because they're going from like three barrels to 15 or 10 barrels to 30 um five barrels to 30 you know people are really taking huge steps um but I think that's you look at Smutty Nose. They went from like thirty barrels to sixty or ninety barrels or whatever the damn, size of that system damn. is. But I think that's I think that's what ends up coming back and biting you in the ass is you know for you've, for ten twenty years there's been um, enough growth in craft beer to justify those exponential jumps like cryptocurrency. Yeah. It's like everyone gets all excited. They get all pissed off when they see like two percent growth over the course of a month on their coins. But it's like you're used to the 20% swings that get you all excited every day. That's the way craft beer has been. Is craft beer has been riding this wave of these huge swings. Um, but I think the market's changed. And for us, you know, not uh, the goal really wasn't to, you know, scale exponentially. It was to just let's see if we can make beer eat, uh, more easily, more consistently. But otherwise, 10 barrels feels like the sweet spot for what our operation is. Yeah. I mean, especially for us. Because. You know, we have the, you know, we essentially are our own distribution company. You know, it's, you know, it's like if we scaled the 30 barrels, now we're, you know, adding, you know, three times yeah, as many staff, clients or something yeah. like, you know, a distributor wouldn't do that. I mean, right. that's like a recipe for, you know, disaster of biting off more than you can chew. So, you know, for us getting the smaller tanks having better inventory control it's like you know when we keg something it goes out when we can something it's like fresh you know it's not a 30 barrel batch and you know we take a month to sell it or something like that it's like it's gone that week 
There would be no need to. So, I mean, if you guys are just it's like to we stay need more, we'll fill another infermenter. You know, right. it's, uh, <laughs> you're like, nope, same size, just shinier. And we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to beep out cryptocurrency, or we can't put this on Facebook as advertised. Nah, I'm fine. I just won't, I just won't <laughs> put just it in the title. Can't, yeah, you, you just can't, can't say promote it. Or yeah, just can't, just cannot promote any, any. Uh, which is weird because uh, with Roger Tilton and his uh, holdings company of his marijuana venture he's, business. He's got to be loaded at I this had, point. <laughs> I had no no issue promoting that one. I'm going to say he's not hurting, really. <laughs> no, probably not. He, dri- he drives a nice car. Uh, you want to grab... Sorry to do this to you. This will be the last time, I promise. Uh, Lord Hobo, one more out of the day. Sure. Got another one? Sorry. I thought I missed out. I do think it's funny that all three beers look the exact same. I think the wait a minute was a little more cloudy. But other than that, they they all look the same. This oh, one. You got some floaties in yours. Yeah, I did. Definitely. Embrace that vitamin B, man. Mm, delicious. <laughs> I'm starting to get used to it with the hazier ones. Used to kind of the whole pulpy like stuff floating in it. Ugh. But it's not bad. I like yeah, the man. cloudy, hazy ones. Yeah, no, it is. It's good. Uh, there you go. Yeah, you got that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, Lord know. Hobo. I don't know. They don't Lord filter Hobo. their shit. Oh shit! Look, he's like, "Fuck this! I'm not drinking it." No, I don't. I mean, I don't. We don't filter our shit tape. either, but we also don't. We try not to rush it, so it's yeah, yeah. But I mean, you know, four years ago when we opened, New England IPAs weren't a thing. Now they are. So, yeah. <laughs> right. So is Broken Arrow considered a New England IPA? It's called the Broad Arrow, and Bro- no. Jesus Christ. It's wow, wait a minute. It's a, story. Story. It's it's a, movie again, it's a really it? good movie. <laughs> Dude, that, <laughs> that's right. I, I mean, love I, John Woo, too. Good. He's great. <laughs> Who's in that? That's right. Mission Impossible. Christian too. Slater. Is oh, it Christian yeah. Slater? Yeah, Christian yeah. Slater. Yeah. John Travolta. You know, it's a great don't, movie. Don't forget the doves. <laughs> A lot of doves. John, oh, Howie John Long was in that movie. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, it is not a New England IPA. I, I don't even. I mean, it's like a traditional. It's more like an English style IPA, I guess. I mean, you know, it's funny because you know the more you read about what a new New England IPA is, you know, it seems harder and harder to define. You know, is it the mouthfeel? Is it just the fact that it's hazy? Things like that. So, I don't know. I've always been a a fan of clearer beers just because you know i drink with my eyes type of thing. Yeah. You know, it's like you get a nice plate of food. Like if it's plated nice, it just tastes better somehow and some of us like mexican food so some of us like mexican food. <laughs> yes sir so for me i've always i don't care as long as it's wrapped beer, properly but, yeah it's just know. it's that it's all about the wrapping i could be all but just together. naturally like uh i've also like beers that aren't bitterly aggressive is a better word like i like the hops I like the flavors you can get but like if it sticks with you i'm not a huge fan of that so um you know, we've always tried to avoid that, which I think New England styles do naturally. Um, you know, they tend to have softer water, you know, some regards. You know, like, it's not so blocky. So I think we kind of did those things anyway. But, you know, it was too clear to visually say that it was something. But You still playing around at the house? Like, do you have a setup at... Oh, well, it's at the garage. brewery now. Oh, so. it's at the brewery yeah. now. Yeah, we keep working work. In the garage. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> keep working at work. Right. But even like if we are home brewing, it tends to be on like a Saturday. We're like, because like you know, Mike was saying earlier about Jim. You know, he's a you know guy who works with us who just you know is really into brewing and wants to learn everything. And every so often he'll be like, you know, is are you working this Sunday? If not, like, can we just like go brew for a bit? And it's like we're sitting right on the other side of the glass drinking beers. <laughs> At the brewery, apparently you know, watching Broken Arrow. <laughs> <laughs> you joke. I would totally put Broken Arrow. I mean, well, what did we watch today? It was uh, Alien to start. There you go. Director's cut. Yeah, I think Jim had yeah. Zoolander on. So. <laughs> you, know, you find out a lot about. And you, person when you, leave oh, you, you put you on back. Gone in sixty seconds, the Nicolas Cage version. Yeah. Well. So. <laughs> uh, well, you want to name all the fermenters after women, so I figured. I do. I'll, I'll meet you halfway. <laughs> well, it's also happening. That's uh, right. I'll name mine Eleanor. There you go. <laughs> oh, will you just clear up? God damn it. That is a lot of shit. Yeah, I don't think it will. It's a lot of yeast. Yeah. Man, man. Well, that's what made it from sugar water into beer, so embrace it. I am. Could you mix it up a little bit? <laughs> Filter some of it out? A little bit? 
it's not that bad. I mean, yeah, I know, some like, of those wheat beers, they're like, they got chunks floating in them. I will say your Emma Wood is probably one of the only wheat beers that I can actually uh, drink. So Emma tolerate. Wood is probably the second most frustrating beer to that make. we've ever come up with behind Burn the Ships. And uh, that was just because of the yeast. Like we kept like the hops the same, the malt the same. It was, you know, it's like a 50-50 pale malt and wheat. And uh, I think we made it like seven times. And the only thing we changed was the, the yeast. And oh my god, that was that was so a terrible fr- process. So frustrating. It was like seven or eight times, and like try this one, and then I started making like multiple at a time. So we had like flights of the same one. With yeah, and yeasts. back so back then, like Mike's palate was egregiously more defined than mine. So he's like, I would come home from work, and he'd be like, try these three versions, and I try all three. I'm like, they all taste the same, and he's like, oh, fucker. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, meh, it's good. <laughs> I'm like, dude, they're awesome. He's like, well, which one do you like better? I'm like, eh. Which one would you recommend? I am not helping at all. <laughs> I think Did it you was just say eeny, meeny, miny, moe out loud? <laughs> not bad. Uh, Did you gulp that right down? I had to. There was, uh, there was a lot of, of shit, glass. yeah. <laughs> I do yeah, think... I think Emma Wood's probably my favorite. Just, uh, I don't know. The yeast in it is such a pain in the ass, though. But um, Is that why you only do it like once a year? Uh, no, I mean, it's more of a... Wheat beers are kind of funny. You know, people are like wheat people or they're not wheat people. Uh, yeah, and, the uh, the guy that's actually doing our uh, – hosting the live event for whatever day that we pick that out, uh, he's a, a big wheat beer fan. And I was like, oh, all right. Like, he, he came on a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And I want to at least accommodate, like, because I know when we went there, he's like, uh, I, I mean, I'll, I'll drink IPA. So, I mean, he enjoyed the beer. He'll drink them. Uh, but he wanted a, a wheat one, so I went to go get one for him. I didn't get one, but I went to go get one, and I'm just like, I just don't. You I'm can not taste it. That. You can taste the wheat, and I don't. I'm not a fan of tasting yeah, wheat. You know, they're they're finicky beers to brew, and uh, brewing with wheat is it's dirty. Like it's a dirty. Like Victory's a dirty freaking beer, but Emma Wood, for as light as it is, it's uh, it's definitely finicky. Yeah. But it, most of that just goes, it, like Mike said, it goes back to the yeast. Yeah, it does whatever it wants. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people overlook the yeast, but I mean, it contributes as much to the flavor as anything else. So, you know, is that what makes that you it want? stick on the back of the the tongue? That ye- the ye- oh, if it's yeah. got too much yeast, that that uh, not, yeah. not necessarily too much, but some yeast produce produce different flavors than others, and Belgian yeast especially add a lot of flavor. Like we've talked before about switching the yeast out, but it's like it wouldn't. And Mike's made a really good point about it. It just wouldn't be the same beer at all. Yeah. And the thing about Emma Wood is when you really hit the mark on it, it, it really is a damn good beer. Because um, I'm not a huge wheat beer fan either, but Emma Wood on, on a hot summer day. Oh, it was really good. I enjoyed it. Yeah, it kills. Yeah, it is really good. That's my thing with wheat beers is the one, the usually the unfiltered part of a lot of them. And then there's always this like taste that a lot of them have at the like the back end of it. like just, clove and banana and like yeah just like something that just God, tastes all that like it there? sits there no it's a that's byproduct flavor from yeah. the from the yeast fermentation it's like uh, hefenweizen yeast they have like huge banana flavor and then uh belgian seems like it's more clove and you know some produce way more than others like carl said and I you know we just kind of those. found one we liked yeah hefen anything i just Usually it's got blueberry this or yeah. something that, and I'm like, no, nope, no, nope, not Just even touching Google. it. What goes with banana? <laughs> Peanut butter, I hear. That's that's, right. that's about it. I think I have a hard time making beers. When I cook, I don't pay attention to shit. I just kind of throw stuff together. Yeah, and it comes that. out good. No, I learned the hard way. You can't do that experiment. with beer. Yeah, that's that's right. it's you can't just throw baking. smoked malt in something. And... Yeah. <laughs> Although some people well, do. Uh, no, that's some people do. That's how we started. First, well, first one batches. was terrible, yeah. First three Ooh. batches, we poured right down the drain. We didn't even bottle them. Yeah. Like one sip, and you're like, nope, no, this no, ain't we it. just smelled it. <laughs> one smell, and you're like, no. Yeah, we're like, no not way. gonna bother. It's been a long day. Yeah, yeah. but. <laughs> well, you know, when you're home brewing and you're out there and you're sanitizing every single bottle, and then you pull the fermenter and you're like, oh, Jesus. Yeah. And you're like, forget it. I just wasted three hours like sanitizing these bottles I spent the last week collecting. That's right. That's right. I like to reminisce. It makes me feel better about that new brewing system we got. Yeah. Less things to worry about. It makes me feel, makes me feel better about just everything. Yes. 
<laughs> ne- next brew day, you can watch Aliens. I'm too. watching the, as, right. as much as the canning line can occasionally be like a pain in the butt, and it's like, what the fuck are you doing? Um, it's like when it's humming and like punching out 16 cans a minute. It's like this is way better, oh, like man. than everything we've ever done. <laughs> like, this is just. Is the plan to go all cans for all of them, or just uh, just selected that ones? That is like so we... far in the future. Like being able to do something like that. Like our vault, we we would have to outgrow the nano brewery license. We would have to um, outgrow like probably the facility. I mean, doing all the brands into cans because they're talking about can storage, and then where where are we distributing them all? Um, we've kind of learned that um, you know the the vast majority of our customers are either a victory or a burn the ships person. And, uh, you know, we're, we're kind of buckling down on that for the near term. Uh, I mean, in the future, it'd be great if we can do all that cool, like mix pack, whatever else stuff, but that is nowhere on our radar at this point. Yeah. It's just not, you know, it's not in the cards for a brewery of our size. I, we follow the numbers and went with what people say they want. People want victory and they won't burn the ships. Uh, and they will want Revuelta um, hey. once that goes live. So, oh, we're a lot of time but I think that's it. it. Yeah. I didn't know where we were at. No, I we spent very, all day. I was very curious. I didn't know either. It's okay. I just <laughs> wait for Carl. I'm like, <laughs> let, well, me loose, live. let me do this, Carl. I mean, we, that we, is true. It is not. You live. were letting people try it at the bar. Like that's true. Yes. <laughs> Here, try this. Son of a bitch. Now, does that that doesn't change your the labeling of the business uh like nano micro whatever they are if you have a second place are you still that you still can only do the same amount uh the facilities are given their own license so yes we could have in theory another facility the problem is with 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 that you know as as, because we've we've had people approach us about opening a second facility one was in downtown manchester one was right off uh uh the highway in uh, Nashua, another one was up in the lakes. So we've had people approach us about, um, are we interested in expanding or opening another facility? And we've entered, you know, we've run the numbers and looked at it and like, you know what, there, there's one, there's something about the place that we're at that's cool and you can't fuck with that. Yes. Um, oh, and really that. just going back and looking at the numbers of like, is, is this now the right time? Is this the right opportunity? Um, but when you go all the way back to like the you know a lot of people come into our brewery and are like if you guys were in downtown nashville or downtown manchester you would kill it and it's like yes the bar here is really cool but i think one of the reasons why it's cool is because you're in the middle of an industrial park in a warehouse drinking beer like it has that speakeasy underground grassroots insurgent feel to it um but at the end of the day even though that's the part of the business that is outward facing and most people have the most uh interaction with we are primarily a beer production and beer distribution company so we need industrial utilities we need a loading dock we need um the ability to run logistics out of that facility um and as a manufacturer the more footprints that we hold the less efficient the business becomes Right. Because now we're paying two lease bills and two utility bills and two staffs. And if you're a manufacturer, you want to keep everything in house, especially if it's like I want to have one facility in Merrimack and then another one in Manchester. That makes no sense. Right. So uh, it, as as big as the dreams might go and, you know, it's fun to play those those mind games. The right opportunity just hasn't come up. And we're very, very happy with where we are. Um, and we love Merrimack. So... I the, going to go. You guys were there for a while, and I never even knew it was there. And finally went in. I it kind of changed the whole way I look at stopping for a beer. You know, like usually if I stop for a beer on my way home from work, it was like at a restaurant bar or something because you know it's quick, it's easy. You no, know, you don't have to like commit to anything. There's no bar hopping. You don't have the bar regulars. You go into there, and it's a cool, chill. You can talk to anybody that's there. Place is usually not overly crowded when I go in, but. Sometimes it gets crowded, especially Tuesday nights. Holy shit, trivia nights. But uh, I was thinking more like <laughs> – I was thinking more not like Manchester, more like the Lakes region. But like the whole atmosphere of the place that you guys got, you're so, like you said, incognito. It's just a – you're only open for a few hours. You can stop in, grab a drink, head out. Like it's it's a good atmosphere. And I was we were talking with the Long Blue Cat guys about that. Like for me now, it is more important when I go into a place that – that it's more about the beer than the drinking. 
Like, you go into a lot of bars, and that's what people are there to do, get drunk. And I'm going to a lot of these places now to try a new beer, not not to go in and get smashed ass and, you know, take an Uber home. <laughs> so Yeah, you're going to the breweries to try the yeah. beer and to a bar to get shit-faced. So it's kind of like a whole new perspective on how I stop for a beer or where I go for a beer. Like, I'd rather go to one of these smaller places because of just you guys got the cool vibe. Except for Tuesday nights, really yeah, crap. I think that's that's we we, we kind of fit into a, a weird, like in the middle niche there between like what, you know, just like a, a a pure brewery where it's just all about the beer and you're getting like like you go to Henniker and it's just like samples like it's not really a bar with pints, yeah. but at the same time we're not, you know, a bar on the DW Highway where people are going to get housed, right? Um, it, it's I we still I I can't I can't still quite put my finger on what it is that's going on at the bar um mike can describe it better i guess with a, what's that german phrase oh gemutlich 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 <laughs> go on <laughs> no it's, uh, actually the uh the former brewmaster over at anheuser bush um I don't know. I feel like his adopted son. Like when we opened <laughs> up, like he took me in. He gave Carl and I the top to bottom tour, and you know, showed us how to like taste beer and how to do everything right. And you know, he's like an old school German guy, and you know, he he has like a PhD in chemistry or something like that. Jeez. And um, you know, he's like a human lab. You know, he'll try the beer, and it's like, oh, this is zero defects. And you're like, okay. And then. Uh, <laughs> You know, you'll you'll tell like the estimates of like, oh, I think it has this many IBUs and this alcohol, and we're sending it out to a lab, and he'll just tell you, and he's like, you know, dead on with the lab. You know, he's like Jeez. unbelievable. That's awesome. And, uh, but That's a lot of years. The of best, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I remember coming in. It was uh, the first October we were open. He just comes in with like the GM at the time and a couple other people, and they're just you know having a couple beers, hanging out. And he pulls me aside, and he's like, in Germany, there's a word for this like what you guys made here it's called gemutlich and it's it's not like welcoming but it's like welcoming and cozy with like your best friend while your favorite song's on by like the fire you know it's like this yeah. all-encompassing feeling and there's no english word for it and uh to this day it's, it's still the best compliment i've ever I gotten i can't put my finger on it it's just it feels like togetherness like i don't know like everything's right in the world when you're sitting at the bar having a beer and just yeah. and no matter if, how crowded or not crowded i mean I think it's, it's you guys. I mean, but I, but I feel between like you guys, the guys that work yeah. there, you guys talk to all the guests. Most <clears throat> majority of them, you know who they are. Like they come in all the time, or or at least some of the time. Like you, you take the time out of your out of your uh, day to like, oh, what's up, man? How you doing? Yeah. You know, like like interact with people more than just like, eh, yeah. What, what do I you think, want? Yeah. Well I, well, I think we started that, and like now, except like first, it was like you know this, you know nice little thing and don't ruin it and make everything perfect but now i think you attract the right people and they kind of have the certain attitude when they come in and it like builds on itself it's like i couldn't get in its way now it's kind of unbelievable yeah you guys kind of make uh people feel more comfortable about talking to other people that are there to do kind well of so the that's the thing, thing is we don't do anything to do that cause people, like cause people come in all the time and tell us like you guys are awesome you guys like you really like build something here i'm like all we did is unlock the door that's all we did we we make beer up out back all day then we unlock the door at four o'clock and then you guys all come in and make it into something and i don't know if it's it, it's it's got to be i think it's just a combination of the stories um uh the environment the aesthetics and then of course the beer and then just all wrapped together it's just people feel like they're in their comfort zone and when you get people in their comfort zone and they feel comfortable just being themselves, I think that's when you get the best out of people. And no matter how diverse they are or what their background is, when people are at their best, they can all kind of get along together. And I think that's kind of what we're seeing. Um, it's just people who are in their element. They feel like it's just another extension of their home. Um, that little garage bar, you know, it's everyone who doesn't have a man cave in town is coming and hanging out at Abel. Yeah. And honestly, like, uh, when you guys are like, oh, it's a cool place. I mean, for us, I mean, it's kind of the best feeling about the whole business. Yeah, so, yeah, you know, people have a good fun. feeling, but for us, it's like mutual. It's like, this is, this is amazing. Like, I can't believe this happened type of thing. So I mean, shit, we awesome. sat and talked for like 20 minutes about yeah. the pretzels. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it's like, <laughs> I was, 
<laughs> Dude, I'm not gonna lie. I I learned oh, a lot about that was, that was Mike's pretzels? biggest project. Uh, it's it's, the, it's ongoing. I mean, the pretzels my, are good, but you know, my you wife gotta be perfect. Them. <laughs> my wife and I were discussing. I'm like, I think the eight dollar pretzels are for the little bags of pretzels over there. She's like, No, there's no way. Mm-hmm. So we asked him about the pretzels, and he was. We talked about it for like 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. I learned a lot about. You know how you, you we've been selling a shitload of those pretzels. Oh, I like that, it. bro. It's the beer mustard. Is see, I didn't get to Maybe. try. I haven't got to try it yet. Oh, but man. well, we're yeah. sold out right now. So oh, there you go. Yeah, my think... fiance was like, "Oh, you have to have beer mustard if you're gonna do the pretzels." I was like, yeah. "No, we don't. I'll just get oh, a dipping do. sauce or something." And she came home with. All the ingredients to make beer mustard. And she's like, I'm gonna make it. I'm like, No, you're not. I will call a guy. You stop. Stop it right now. At least she didn't go to the standard like we're not making beer, beer mustard every so, week. So she won the fight. That's right. <laughs> so now you have beer That's mustard. Right. Which I she heard wasn't is mad at delicious. me. But she gave me the uh, I'm finding you less sexually attractive look. <laughs> I was like, All right, we'll get some beer mustard. In here. <laughs> it was a couple lonely nights. That's so right. you know what? Beer mustard sounds Over good. Over beer mustard. All right, you win. I think part of it is, one, you made it about New Hampshire in a way that I don't think any other business I've seen has. Like, you brought up history that... There's a rich history. I never in the even, state, I never yeah. even heard of. Yeah. Well, you know, Carl and, so and I aren't guys. from here. It's like I know, we that's, hear these that's stories the and we're like, this place is awesome. We might as well go check it out. <laughs> that so. that part and blows my mind uh, with with you guys, with uh, Jonathan from Hand Digitus Designs, who did our logo. The fact that you guys are not from here, but have come here, made it your home, and like are involved in like the history of it. One, the, just blows my I mean, mind. It's the live for your anyway. dice day. This is like where I wanted to be, and I'm a huge history nerd. So you know, this is plus it's an awesome place. The people here are awesome. It, it, it's it's really cool. Um, you know, we've been talking a lot at at, at Abel about um, you know, recently about we've been operating all these years without a mission statement or a vision statement or whatever else. So we're starting to talk about like, what are the values and the principles of able so that as we grow, you know, we're, we're about to be off to the races here. Like what are the things that this culture that we've built? Um, then you look at States like New Hampshire and how it's so different from every other state in new England. And you kind of go back to the motto of this whole, like, it's the live free or die state. And that really has permeated into the culture here. And the, I don't know, the people are just awesome. They're very independent. Uh, they know what they want in life. Um, I don't know. I dig it. And I think it's a, there's a lot of great stories here, which, you know, there's nothing better to have during a great story than a great peer. And, okay. uh. I get it. Well, it's not... funny when Carl came up with the name Abel Ebenezer. I'm, I still live in California, and I hear this story about Ebenezer Mudgett and the Pine Tree Riot. I'm like, that's an awesome story. And uh, maybe two or three days later, I'm watching the History Channel, because I'm a geek like that. And it's uh, Modern Marvels on wood. Just wood. So obviously, <laughs> I'm locked in. I'm going to watch the whole hour. <laughs> and, uh, you know, 30 minutes into it, and it has the, uh, the picture, the death of General Warren, that we have hanging in the brewery of the Pine Tree Riot. And I'm like, what are the odds of that? I'm like, this is the coolest story ever. I'm definitely moving to New Hampshire now. So. <laughs> That's crazy. That's all it took. I'm not but it's funny when I flew to San Diego for that, like, because at that point, the idea of calling a brewery, I knew I wanted to do a brewery, and the idea for a name that I had landed on was Abel Ebenezer. I was like, I need to have a cool story. And then I had, uh, like, drawn out just very generic, because I'm not a graphic designer or anything. I was just like, I know that it's called Abel Ebenezer, and I know that a pine tree has to be a logo. I don't know how to sell that without people thinking of uh, a Christmas carol and fucking Christmas shit. Ebenezer you know, Ebenezer Scrooge, Scrooge yeah. and Christmas trees. And Mike was basically the first person to be like, no, that's a cool story. Like, cause yeah. <laughs> sitting at a bar in San Diego, to, like, writing it on cocktail napkins. And I'm like, so hear me out. There was this dude back in the 1700s who fought against the British over pine trees. I'm not losing you, right? Okay. And <laughs> he's like, I watched that episode. Right. <laughs> Modern Marvels, check it out. <laughs> Minute 43. Nah, so. Um, but, you know, in California, it's like, you know, history starts in like 1850. You know, it's like gold rush. It's like, yeah. You know, it's great. But yeah. I don't yeah, know. I, I get like this American way. history and it's awesome. I had someone from Vermont recognize my, my hat. That's awesome. <laughs> and uh, well, I mean, I know, I know, Vern- Vermont's not all that impressive because it's you know an hour away. People no, we come get through. we get people from all like. I was going to ask logos, you. The logos like kind of flown. I mean, it's a. Uh, it's funny. It's like the third logo we had. It was like alternate number three. And we're like, ah, eh. 
and eventually it just it like works. squeaked in there and we're like this thing's awesome people are starting to recognize it it's there iconic no my little brother works at a bar in uh down in maryland and he was like he was wearing his a i, I sent him an able ebenezer shirt and he was wearing it behind the bar because they're allowed to wear brewery shirts behind the bar and he's like yeah some guy walked in and he was wearing an able shirt and an able hat and i was like Dude, Abel Ebenezer? He's like, fuck yeah, man. (laughs) And he was like, yeah, this is right outside of D.C. in Maryland. I'm like, that's pretty fucking cool. That is pretty cool. You can buy our beer nowhere down there. (laughs) No, you definitely have to uh, either come here or transplant it down. Nashua is the closest place you can buy beer (laughs) to to D.C. (laughs) Well, you know, 90% of the reasons why we're in cans is I got tired of checking growlers at the airport. You know, going back to California... I've learned uh, going back home without beer when you own a brewery is yes. not the beer? right well, answer. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah going anywhere concert. without beer, it's like becomes the running joke. Mm-hmm. Listen, people, not not beer oh, guy. I can't even go to the dentist anymore without like you know a hat for someone or beer for someone else. I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, you gotta cut this. Yeah, off I'm at the VA right? with the with the the PA is doing my annual like physical, and he's like, oh, did you bring any beer? I'm like, no, I didn't bring beer to the fucking hospital, man. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for. I get know. that's the joke. That's right. uh, on your sheet, it says you drink a lot. It's okay. You must be turning down invites to things like all the time. Hey, you want to come? We're having a party. Oh yeah, it's the, you know. Because at the VA, they ask Predators you the standard on. questions of like, are you high risk or whatever else. They ask you how many times a week do you have a, a drink, and I'm like, do you want like the honest answer? And he's like, well, you're low risk if you say like two to three times a week. I'm like, then two to three times a week. <laughs> <laughs> you say two, two to one times a week? No, twenty one. I have twenty one beers. <laughs> that's gotta be rough. But like, I, that, that's what like, I knew. I get a sample, man. They I'm looking at my doctor. I'm like, do How you want me to taste? tell? Like, I drink beer every day. Like every day, I have a beer. And I was like, but it's my profession. Like, what do you want me to do about it? I, I made it a out. business out of it. That's right. I'm not drinking like seven of them and then driving, you know, to my ex girlfriend's house or something, <laughs> or even like texting, <laughs> drunk dialing. <laughs> I'm having two, and I make dinner, and I have a third. (laughs) I have one. I start brewing the beer. I have another. Then I enjoy smoke proper's rolling accessories. Yeah. (laughs) I just hooked him up with a... There's a podcast out of Alaska that I talk back and forth with the host. It's called Far North Tokers because it's legal in Alaska for recreational use. So I'm like, bro, man. They can use it there I'm gonna, I'm going to send you... Let me send you one. Just... Check it out, see what you think. Let me know. So he did. Made a post about it. Did you see it? I haven't seen it. No. I will tag you in it. I usually only read the stuff I get tagged in. Like I said, <coughs> I'm trying to stay off all the social media. I need you to use it as marketing. Stop, I do. Stop reading the news. I do. Well, I I don't. I just anything that has to do with this or you guys or anybody who's having to do with the show. That's what I share. Yeah, I try to do that too now. You know, my time hop keeps popping up of things I used to post. I'm like, God, I'm such an asshole. I know. I can't, I can't post these things. You can't now. I yeah. mean, that's pretty much all I post. Like, I have basically all, all offensive shit. That's right. I time hate hop myself. is Facebook reminding you how much you've grown up. That's really what it is. Yeah, I had a picture of my kid when she was like six months old that just popped up. I'm like, huh. That's when I posted responsibly. Well, I say like, well, I say like a post that I made when I was in like college, and I'm like, oh, dude, you, were, you were such an asshole when you were 22. Like, Funneling. Yeah, but who wasn't an asshole at 22? I mean, you're fucking kids. That's yeah, I don't that's know. That's why I don't take people seriously unless they're 25 or older. So. That's, that's uh, a fair I, assessment I, right I there. I don't think that's true because there are people that are over 25 that post on Facebook that you're like, oh, I'm not taking you seriously. No, no, it's like a well, general see, rule. A, I mean, obviously, a, there's some flex point. here. I'm just saying 25 you know, or less, you kind of have to prove yourself, you know, 25 or more. It's right. So you got to have a checkoff point. 25 is good because your brain's fully formed so that's where you start and then it's on merits after that it's more like the permanent record i think the insurance had it right about renting a car right you know, it's like i'm gonna go with that 25 is good I'm we're gonna go start at 25 and deduct points from here right. 24 you can't rent a car so okay if you're 25 you. and post some wackadoo shit on on social media then you're probably serious about that shit just just people in general you know it's like oh you're 24 huh don't really know what you want in your life <laughs> you haven't figured it out yet that's right Let's say when I we would had, love uh, to hear your advice about this. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had uh, Jim from from Veterans Counts here. Uh, Jim go, Moody? Yeah, going over Jim. like the the beard stuff for the beard competition that we're He's doing. He's doing that fashion show with us in a couple weeks. Yeah. So. No, I'm glad it got postponed. 
Last night was a, obviously a bad night if you were in New England for Tuesday on, was it? Mike, oh, how overcarbed. dare you? What the hell just happened? I dropped in the car. <gasps> <gasps> and it still stays Just like that, that one? Oh, oh, holy shit. Maybe it's just that one. All right, it'll be all right. Yeah. Well, that was interesting. No, I don't have a towel. It's all right. Just, you know. I mean, this is what happens when I take Mondays off. <laughs> that looks overcarbed. Uh oh. You don't, uh. It's a, that's that. So much quieter on so the table shit. right now. We're, so, we're just all back. Like I'll be there on die. Monday. Don't worry about it. It's like we it. just watched a child die or something. Close. I've, n- I've never seen that Still happen. I've never before. seen that happen either. It's like, I mean, it's been now sitting watch for Mike's gonna open A part of me wants to open all of them and buy back all the beer immediately. Kutch, Kutch, this is unacceptable. You have nobody mm. to blame. Maybe it just shook really big when you try to peel it off. That's what she said. Sure. Sure. Mm. You're she's stupid. But yeah, we were talking. Sorry, that was way off I got derailed though. by the whole like explosion there. I wasn't. It was like a science project also from she sixth said. grade. <laughs> uh, when we were talking to Jim about age, uh, what were you saying? You wanted to, to lower. They were talking about lowering the drinking age to like twenty or whatever. And, Eighteen. Yeah, and, and not that I want it to be higher, but. Uh, I think 21 is a good starting point, but we were talking about being an adult and when, when you're an adult, you know, you can fight for your country at 18, you should be able to participate and, you know, being, being grown up or whatever was the point. And I just looked at him like, dude, I didn't grow up until I was like 34, 35. Yeah. So you need to like, what's well, funny. Just I say that getting health. an 18 year old kid, uh, yeah. uh, alcoholic beverage because he's in prime physically to go fight then it's it's a different story when you're f- fucking with their brain with See, chemicals i think it's a bad idea to give uh an inexperienced 25 year old alcohol for the first time <laughs> like i think knocking that out between the ages of i don't know 18 or 19 to 21 you get that all that stupid shit out of the way i agree to disagree that's what that's what you that's said what right I there said. and i, I go i didn't stop doing stupid shit Ever, right. yeah. I mean, right. it's still but, constant. Right, but I mean, for the most part, you go even younger. People, I mean, you go to places, you go, you go to, oh, yeah. like, you go to like Europe. You know, kids got it out of their system by the time they're like fifteen, sixteen years old because they would be at dinner at the dinner table having a beer with their their parents. You can go, you can go to some municipalities in yeah. Texas where the drinking age is eighteen, as long as your parents are there. Yeah, yeah. See, I feel like they should be able to buy it in a store. Just don't drink it at. The place, yeah, like a bar. Or yeah. Something. Oh, so, yeah. So let me let me make this clear. If if they were to lower the drinking age to like, you know, whatever Germany's is right now, if they even have a drinking age in Germany, I if you can see over the bar and if they were to lower it, I would I would then put probably something at able that says like you have to be twenty one years old to drink because I don't want fucking nineteen year old kids. No, no, drink, no right, right. Because it's not that kind of bar. establishment. Yeah. Well, but, when you know, I was in college, like I got in the motorcycles because my dad was, and I was like. I'm going to get in the motorcycles too. You know, my dad is in the military, so I'm going to join the military. You know, all those kind of things. And uh, I was really pumped about it. And he's like, you know what? Just wait till you're 21. I was like, really? And he's like, yeah, just so you live some of your life before you die. I was like, okay. <laughs> Jesus. You know, yeah. but there's like some perspective of that of like, all right, just, just hold your horses. You don't have to jump into this. You know, take your time. Right. Like, be a little bit smarter. Be a little bit more wise. I, mean, I think that's the point is that everybody's a little different. The moment you put like a baseline standard of like 21 is when you are capable. It's like there are some 21-year-olds that are dumb as shit. And there are some, you know, 16, 17, 18-year-olds that have got it figured out. So yeah. I think... Uh, I, I think it's a, it's not something you just throw a baseline standard onto. But at the same time, I think you're also depriving, like a lot of people are complaining about, uh, you know, kids being stupid and going like breaking mailboxes and, and all that other stupid shit. And it's like, well, why do kids do stupid shit like that? It's probably because they're fucking bored. Right. You know, we have the oldest children in the world in this country. And now we have like laws that say that they can be on their parents' health insurance until they're 26, 26 years yeah, old. It's ridiculous. So now we're starting to, we're, we're already starting the standard of, you know, 26 is now the, the standard of when you become an adult you know social media stuff aside it, you know i don't know i think as far as i think people it, should be allowed to make mistakes because it, you know it's through all the mistakes that i've made that i've learned to be the person that i am today and um 
uh, you know, drinking wasn't a part of that. I wasn't a big drinker when I was younger. Um, maybe that's contributed to why I'm such a big drinker now. <laughs> I think, well, see, my point with that was at 18, you kind of take the luster out of it by 21. Like, it's not a big deal anymore. If you're legally accountable for yourself in all aspects oh, so, of I mean, the it world. becomes a thing. Right. So you, you spend those first couple of years getting the, oh, I drank too much. Now I know my limit and I shouldn't drink that. And like... Like, you could buy it, but maybe not go to a bar because then you have to leave. Well, this kind of thing is, like, you talk to Europeans, like, they get eased into it. They're, it wasn't, like, this one hurrah that they had. It was just, like, oh, yeah, right. it was just a part of my culture, my my daily life. And, of course, you don't overdo it because that's because the, when I started drinking, I was a child and listening to my parents. And it, it was just one of those things you don't you just don't do. It's, so, it's, just, it's just your culture. But I think yeah, there's whereas, enough people that are bored here and don't have well, the, the thing is, I didn't, that they're getting drunk to or they're drinking to get well because they, they have to go out of their way like it becomes something secret like almost like drinking at the able ebenezer bar you feel like you're part of the underground mm-hmm. you're drinking mm-hmm. in a warehouse in an industrial park like you're doing something dirty and it's like well the moment you're 19 and you're in a college dorm room and someone's like you want to take some shots of bacardi 101 don't do that if you're in a dorm room right now <laughs> <laughs> do it's not really touch bad. that stuff <laughs> But I'm saying you're like you're like hell yeah, uh, and you're doing shots of Bacardi 101 and uh, or 151 and chasing it with Bud Light. And then you wake up oh, in your roommate's like so bed on homecoming weekend, and it's three it's, days later. And... I may be like uh, I might be sharing like an experience of mine from my freshman <laughs> year of college. Yeah, it was not pretty. So uh, um, that's how I'm gonna quit drinking. By the way, just one at a time. Just, uh, you know, like when you drink so much of something, the next day you're like, I'm never drinking that again. And <laughs> I started I'm just going to knock them off one at a time. Bacardi 151 was the first to go. Bacardi oh, Limon was my first to go. <laughs> then That was probably my second to go. <laughs> Bacardi 151, yeah, I, t- I caught too many beat downs from that stuff, so I, I don't mess around with that. But like in Germany, when, I, I, when I lived there, there were, I mean, as long as you could see over the bar, you could pretty much, I mean, for, I think there might have been a legal age, but the bars were low. So even you could have seen over them, so you could have ordered a drink. But yeah, kids a little bit older than me when I lived there were getting drinks with their parents at the bar. So it didn't. Uh, oh. You want to wait for the avalanche? <laughs> Do I hold it near my face or away from it? That's what she said. It's easily cleaned up right here. <laughs> I'm so nervous. <laughs> Don't do this. Oh, you're so <laughs> maybe it was the operator. Mike's an adult. <laughs> <laughs> I think this might have been like a reused. We're gonna go back the to one. the video footage, and Carl's gonna be like up here, just like, "What are you guys talking about?" <laughs> just like in slow mo, just like. Uh... <laughs> oh, no, it's a huge relief it didn't explode. That's right. Everyone was about to be fired. <laughs> he was thinking about all the mistakes he made before twenty one. <laughs> yeah, see, it looks, it looks a little, a little awfully heavy. Awfully heavy. But it was about Vesuvius. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it didn't explode. Which <clears throat> was... That's right. No, I was telling uh, Jonathan, was that last week? The week before? Um, I don't know. It's all starting to blend together all, with all this yeah. snow. All, yeah. I didn't even, I didn't yeah, even you, know it was you Wednesday You haven't slept today. yet. Uh, that, that our camping trip that we had uh, not changed my perspective, but gave me the confidence i guess if you will to to go through with this because like sitting there talking with you uh talking with jonathan sam like that that camping trip like changed changed a lot uh, well yeah one of us almost died on that trip. Well, i was gonna yeah, say, I mean, someone take a poll to that actually means... no, no wait three of us almost died on that trip that's true no that they means a lot but that... yes three of us did almost die on that trip so yeah <laughs> that will change your perspective yes but even but even just being able to uh be invited to something that like I had no idea who any of you guys were and then talking with you and then uh friendship the like I said when we first came up with the idea from the podcast you were I think the first person I went to that was like dude this is what I'm gonna do will you come on and you're like shit yeah fuck it let's do it man whatever whatever you got like you've been really helpful with a, a lot of stuff and I wanted to say thank you. No, thanks, As far man. as, like, with the event that we have we coming it, up man. in May. For sure. Uh, Veterans Counts, like, linking us with that, with Bearded Sinners. Like, I mean, that's just blossomed, and it's a whole other thing. Well, I apologize for linking you with Bearded Sinners, but... Uh, most of them are good, Chad. <laughs> I'm joking, Chad, Mike. I'm joking. Chad's, 
Chad's great. No, I love Chad. I love Chad's, like, a, Chad's a man of passion. <clears throat> yes, he is. That dude has <laughs> a, a big of heart as he does his lion mane beard. Uh, and he wears like, it all and he up wears on the it. sleeve. <laughs> dude, like, he, he's a great guy. Like, they're all great. Every Everybody that I've met from that group has been, like, you wouldn't you wouldn't think that just looking at them. They're all a bunch of, like, Well, like, last, last year, tats, you like, know, it was, like, on the worst day in, what, August? It was raining. Oh, yeah, it was the, pouring the rain. Yeah. But so the culmination like, of your beard competition. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. everyone was in good spirits. Everyone's positive. You know, it's just, you know, it's all about attitude and... You know, yeah, you're gonna no, have a good time if you decide to have a good time, and no, they've you know, been great. great. Like, but yeah, no, you, you've helped me out with a lot of things without really doing much. But saying here, yeah, call this person, connect to that person, and then that's blown up from there. I think after we get through this beard competition with the veterans counts, I think we're gonna end up hopefully doing more more fundraising stuff with them. And good, not another beard competition. No, fuck to that him. shit. He's all done with it at this point. I will never shave again. I will trim it down. I will never shave again. And then even this far out, I will not. It's coming in good though, man. Out. How deep are you? Two months. Two months. Two months. Two months. January seventh, we shaved. Yeah. So so, so uh, just over two months. It's looking good. I feel like I just got started. See, Mike, that's what happens after two months. That's what you should do. Um. Okay. <laughs> it couldn't be any worse than me. <laughs> I yeah, like Joe's it. like no, no, couldn't be. I felt really bad the first week. I had a nice stuff coming in. Not this, obviously. I had a five o'clock shadow yeah. after like seven days. That that first time when we sat together, I looked over like, damn, I feel so bad right now. I almost want to apologize, but I'm not going to. It's like nope. stubble with like the one. The, I got this this bald spot on the side. Yeah, it's a so, scar. It is a scar. scar. It is a scar. Most of it from that dick roaming through your chin. Yeah, it just, <laughs> kept, just kept slapping. It. How'd was, you lose that leg? I was passed out on 151. Uh, don't drink 151, kids. I'm excited for your beer. Like I said, I don't know if he ever told you or if even Chris. Like Abel has been like a weird. Uh, place as far as <laughs> thank the, you as far as like your weirdo Kil- it's culture bunch of weird crazy fuck uh, Kilgore was like the first beer that was not like a Budweiser or whatever that I was like shit this is actually a really good beer nice. and I would like to drink more and then I came back months later because I, I was not a drinker at the time we were having a party I wanted to get some and yeah it was a seasonal so i'm like oh all right uh i'll get i think i get burn the ships and just went with it and then ever since then i'm pretty sure i've knocked everything off your list even the uh the culinary ale the la marie marianne yep had everything i really like except for your your new one that you have coming out which i'm excited oh yeah yeah yeah. no that one will be awesome i mean it's so good it's one of those uh you know, every time we do like a small batch, we always can it up off the uh, the court can machine, oh. and uh, you know we put it away just so we're not hooking up to the draft line all the time. <laughs> and uh, I kept, I think I just had like one of these cans left, and I had a couple friends over, and you know everyone gets like a quarter of a glass type of thing, and by the end of it, you're just like, I wish I had like six of these right now. So <laughs> now is that's that kind of one? like the true test of like, is that the new one that's coming out? Uh, yeah, Revuelta. Cinco so. de Mayo, oh. hopefully. Yeah. Why hopefully? Slaves to the east. Because uh, we're slaves to the east. Oh, that's right. And lager yeasts take their sweet ass time. Yeah. Oh. Otto taught us that. Interesting. Yeah. Is it darker or lighter colored? It's lighter. It's really light. Very light. So, yeah. Yeah. We actually found a, a hop imagine that complements, you know, Imagine a better version really well. of like Corona. Like way better. Like insanely mm, better. Yeah. Like, like with a the lime already version. type of thing. Like it's really yeah, don't good. put a, you don't need to put a lime in it. I was gonna say it doesn't yeah. require fruit, does it? Because no, I, mean, no, I, I will not it. drink it. No, no, <laughs> no. no, no. If it if it needs a fruit to be better to drink, I don't want it. I mean it's it's kind of like if <laughs> I'm you, just I'm anti fruit in the beer. You know, I always thought like breweries and you know like if you see a painting on the wall, like you know who the artist is. Like there's yeah. certain like just like a feeling you kind of get, and I think everything we put out, you kind of have like this feeling. It's gonna be like, you know, if you like our stuff, it's gonna be approachable and easy to drink. It's just about, you know, having a solid flavor that's you know go down goes down easy. So it's gonna fit, you know, Sweet. with that. So 
If you like our other stuff, you'll love it. I gotta ask. Like, I'm gonna drink so much of it. What's the future of the Growler? It's gonna go away eventually, I think. For just you guys or in general? You I mean, think it's, it's already a, going away in general for everybody. We hold on to it because of so many we've sold and right. Well, we had the uh, one liter growlers, and as soon as we got the quart size cans, those like them. nobody bought them anymore. So I mean, the that kind of speaks for the, itself. Yeah, they buy more quart cans. They buy way more quart cans. So we started selling. Like it took us months to go through our last thing of growlers because you know when you buy glassware, you have to buy you know like I can't you buy, buy like a, a case of it. Yeah. yeah, it's like I'm buying hundreds at a time. So so I should get mine maybe autographed or something just yeah get an autograph you, just liter, don't get a you have a one liter growler it is a you also piss off the bartenders every time you bring yeah. one in they have like I the do. narrow mouth i do always bring mine in clean so oh, hey that's, that that's a yeah. it's a big help somebody yeah. asked me <laughs> somebody oh asked God. me when that someone one. comes in with a clean growler you're just like oh thank you <laughs> uh, i'm gonna wrap it up right there no you're good where where i'm looking at the time oh i forgot there's a tv behind me yeah sorry uh I'll wait till you come back and then I'll wrap it up for you. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things that I, I've noticed a lot of people have kind of collected over the years. Yeah, I like, think it's more of a collection thing. But, but they take up so much space. Like, my dad used to collect uh, German Steins. Yeah. But they take up, they don't take up as much space as a Growler. But yeah. I have a few at my house, but... Well, for me, like, people will buy it and they're like, how do I get it home? It's like... <laughs> Put it in the seatbelt. I don't know. That's what I did. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like, you know, it basic book. instincts here, you know? It's like, kids, all right. kids look at you like, what are you doing? I'm making sure it doesn't roll around. That's what right. do you mean? It's fragile. Well, Babies are fragile. Seatbelt. Yeah. <laughs> I initially bought one because uh, my wife's favorite beer is Burn the Ships. Yeah. And you guys didn't have it in cans at the time. And yeah. all you had was quart cans. So I was like, I'm not, I'm not going to buy like three quart cans. I might as well just get a growler. And uh, I filled it I filled it a few times. But I yeah. personally am kind of settled in on a court can if i if like i don't want to come in and get a whole four pack i just want maybe like a couple glasses yeah i'll come in and grab a court can no big deal and it's convenient but those growlers are like big and <laughs> and they're heavy i mean yeah. the uh just the glass on it weighs as much as the court can you know feels like when it's full you know when yeah. the growler's empty so especially in new hampshire it's such an outdoor culture yeah so if someone wants to take it to like you know can it and drink it when they hit the summit or something it's like they're not lugging a giant like two liter you know glass bottle that they have to lug down you know it's a can you know it doesn't weigh anything once it's empty so i gotta get it autographed by you guys and put it in like a man room at some point or my wife's gonna turn it into like a flower pot or nice. planner or something whatever she uh, can find on whatever pinterest. she can find on pinterest hey, I, i've seen some cool growing. things you know the, yeah the, uh what like uh lanterns not lanterns but like light fixture type things i've seen those i saw a harpoon one that got turned things. into a lamp yeah it's pretty cool but so. i want to keep mine just put it up I, I got like two or three that i'll keep the rest of them i'll recycle yeah i do have the one liter i should bring in here but i think like especially with new hampshire i mean new hampshire is like such an outdoor culture you know it's like people say it's like tourism you know all those kind of things but even people that live here it's like you can't get through the winter without you know, liking to do some things outside. Right. Oh, God, yeah. You know what I mean? Like my and wife then, went snowshoeing today. Yeah. And the fact, like, the lakes here are incredible. I mean, you know, the beaches, it's not really the thing out here, but that's fine. Yeah, year You're round. in California, I'm like, <laughs> all right. Yeah, year-round lakes are the way to, you know, that's where everybody wants yeah, to. Yeah, but, I mean, lakes, it's just, like, lakes equal boats. So boats equal cans, because, you know, you're not bringing a glass growler <laughs> on a boat, so it's But like, you are in a bob house. <laughs> yeah. You'll sit in a bob house and ice fish for nine hours with a growler, Well, you know, too. we got I into the... Uh, <laughs> no ice fishing for you? <laughs> the, the common man stores, you know, on the, uh, the 93 go north yeah. and south, yeah. and yeah. they're, like, automatically just killing it. And it's like, people are just buying a bunch of stuff it's only been a month up, like, we've only been in the there for a month now and uh we're the only self-distributing brewery that actually has their product in those you, you know what i'm talking about those big yeah uh stores right off the highway like yeah. the sales over the last month that they've done with us if you stretch those out over a course of a year meaning like you assume that it's just it's going to be the same it's not going to get any busier during the summer yeah which um, it always does by far, they're going to be our best customer of the year. Like That's hands awesome. Down. Nice. Yeah. They're selling so much beer, people. And and the north. And the interesting thing is, to Mike's point, the northbound side, because we have to treat them like two different accounts. 
the northbound side is selling twice the amount of beer as the southbound side. As everybody so knows, huh? everyone head heading hunting. north and they're Fishing. grabbing cans of beer to go up to go skiing, to yeah. go spend their weekend up north, and that's the last stop on the way north that they can grab it. But aspirin sales on the other side, phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't get those numbers. Uh, that's right. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming. No, yeah. Like I said, like, sure. like, it's been fun. Anytime Always. you guys ever want to come on, let me know. Uh, I'll, I'll work you in the schedule. We're, we're neighbors. I'll so. take you on. So this is good. May fifth. And the last can. The release of. I don't want to. Rev Welta. What does that mean? Such a gringo Welta. joke. Come on. Yeah, Are white you? boy. Why you I say, say it? it. Rev Welta. Rev Welta. It means the revolt. Rev Welta. You got to roll the R though. That's right. There you go. Uh, thank you for coming. Make sure. Check us out on social media. Check them out on social media. You can see all their beers, all the restaurants that they're in. Going to Burt's Better Beers, the beer store in Nashua, uh, Barley and Hops in Milford, and get yourself some Victory or some Burn the Ships in there, four-pack, 16-ounce cans. And if you're in Merrimack, dude, stop in, grab a beer. Tell them that you heard about it here just because. you don't, I mean, it doesn't get you shit, but just because it would be full, cool to see. It'll get you, oh, those assholes? Yeah, <laughs> that's where you're at? All right. Just because. <laughs> but thank you guys again, Carl, Mike. It's been fun, dude. Always, Always a fun. pleasure. Appreciate Cheers, it. Cheers, brother. Cheers. Reminds me of when we did the... Uh...